Today we will talk about the Apostle Paul, one of the Apostles of Jesus born between the years 5 and 10 after Christ, in Tarsus in Cilicia, Turkey. Paul was the son of Hebrew parents and also a descendant of the tribe of Benjamin, however, he acquired Roman nationality by birth, which was just granted to people who were born in that region during those times. Paul was a very studied and cultured person, he learned to speak Latin, Greek, Aramaic and of course Hebrew, he was also instructed in philosophy, theology and laws. This is because he came from a Pharisee Jewish family, raised under the strict teachings of the law. The Pharisees were a religious group that made up one of the ruling classes of Jews in Israel, so they were some of the wealthy people of the day, educated and powerful. He had leadership qualities among people since his high level of education allowed him to speak fluently, as well as having a strong and dominant character. It is these gifts that make him worthy of a position of authority within the Pharisee movement, positions that were not assumed by just anyone due to the commitment they entailed. Another key point that allowed him to be recognized within the Pharisee guild and to have influence was the fact that he was instructed by Rabbi Gamaliel, also known as, the Elder. Having the reference of a renowned teacher was something quite remarkable for the time, since it allowed any disciple to have the benefit of a, letter of introduction, that gave him prestige. The first appearance of him in the Bible was during the execution of Stephen, the first case of lynching of a Christian in history. His participation gave him the confidence of the Pharisee leaders, who commissioned him to the city of Damascus, to take charge of the extermination of the Christian movement. In the book of the Acts it is described in chapter 9, how Paul, when heading to Damascus, was suddenly blinded by a flash, and then heard a voice that said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This voice was the voice of Jesus who spoke to him and could also be heard by the men who accompanied him, thus, the power of the Lord made him bend. Paul willingly accepted what the Lord commanded him and gave himself up in prayer and fasting for three days. He waited for the answer that God would give him and once Ananias arrived, he recovered his sight and was filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized. From that moment it was not easy for him, since he would have to fight against the doubt of the Christians and the uncertainty of the Pharisees about him. It is here that he was renamed Paul, his Roman name, which means, little, or, humble, since Christians would not trust, Saul, the name by which he was known as a persecutor and murderer of Christians. This change also represents the new person that God allows him to be, thus giving up the status of his old man. Before continuing, we would like to invite you to visit our official page, Origens 88. You can find the link in the description of this video or search for us directly in your browser. There you will find a large number of biblical and historical studies related to the Bible. We continue with the video. For his first trip he was in Jerusalem, where he met Barnabas, and through him he also met the apostles Peter and James. Unfortunately, later he had to flee from the Greek-speaking Jews. He traveled with Barnabas to Antioquia, Turkey and Cyprus, where he landed on the island of Salamis, where he confronted the magician Elimas. This magician wanted to prevent the proconsul from converting to the Christian faith at all costs, so Paul took action and with the authority of the Holy Spirit declared him blind, thus losing Elimas' sight for a while. Then they traveled to Galicia, the Antioquia region, and there they provoke the wrath of the Jews. They then depart to Iconia, where they do healings, and finally depart back to Derb. God's purpose makes him tour Europe for his second trip, during the years 49 to 52. It is there that he meets his new assistant and traveling companion, Silas. Both travel to Phrygia, Galatia, Troas, and Philippi in Macedonia. They are then joined by Luke the physician, with whom they travel to Thessalonica, Athens, and Corinth. 
In Athens he manages to preach on the Areopagus, which was among the Greeks a high court. Paul surprises the many scholars of the different philosophical currents with the teachings that he brought them. And it is thanks to the Holy Spirit that many people converted to Christianity in that place. Despite all the difficulties of the time, he had great success in Corinth, staying there for at least eighteen months. It was in the first winter that he spent in Corinth that he wrote the first missionary letters, letters where he spoke of the great importance of the Holy Spirit in us. His third and last trip takes place between the years 52 and 56. Paul causes a great riot in Ephesus, because the cult of the goddess Artemis was very influential. Being so prominent, the businesses of the merchants in the area were in jeopardy if the cult of the goddess waned, so they were not willing to accept so peacefully that Paul interfere in it. Later he was assaulted and arrested in Jerusalem, and then taken to Caesarea to be tried, there, false witnesses accused him of taking Greeks to the temple. Paul managed to defend himself against his oppressors in such a way that he leaves them surprised, however, he remains imprisoned for two years awaiting his trial. The reason that the proconsuls Felix and Festus postponed their trial every month was to avoid disputes between Christians and Jews. Paul finally had to appeal to the emperor using his rights as a Roman citizen. Ultimately, he is handed over to a centurion who makes the decision to take him to Rome for his trial. During the trip the ship was wrecked, being a miracle that no one died since God had promised it so. From the year 61 to 63, Paul lived in Rome, one part being in prison and the other under surveillance, however, captivity did not prevent him from continuing his work for God. During that period of time, Paul wrote the letters to the Ephesians, to the Colossians, and to Philemon. Finally they release him when they find nothing against him. He visits the cities of Achaia, Illyria and Crete, the city where he writes the letters to Titus and Timothy, as well as the letter to the Hebrews. He is arrested again in the year 66 because of the testimony given by a false brother, and from Rome he writes his last letter addressed to Timothy, in it he expresses his desire to suffer for Christ as his farewell. Paul lived his last year in a horrible prison, without the company of friends or brothers due to isolation. Finally, in the year 67 he is beheaded from behind with a sword, a condition granted to executed Roman citizens. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1 verse 21